Now let's talk about table 4.3 on page 143 of your text. In chapter 4, and this is on factor loadings and eigenvalues. The factor loadings are the correlation coefficients between each of the five cognitive tasks, which we have in our rows here, and each of the two factors, factor 1 and factor 2. This 5 by 2 matrix of factor loadings is referred to as the factor pattern, the pattern of correlations between five variables and two factors. Now as you can see as you look, the largest factor loading for factor 1 is right here under detour, the value of 0.81. The smallest loading is for operant at 0.06. A small loading indicates that the variable is not very related to the factor in question. So operant is not very, very related to a factor 1, whatever this is. The largest negative loading for factor 1, you can see, is fear with negative 0.71 as its value, indicating that the fear task is quite related to this first factor, but with an inverse relationship. And as the text explains, the interpretation of each factor is found through the identity of its highly correlating variables, the ones with numerically high loadings, whether positive or negative. So with that said, factor 1 in this analysis is accordingly defined as, well, we have detour as the largest positive and fear as the largest negative. So we can call it the detour task versus the fear task dimension. So with the positive end of the factor being defined by detour and the negative end being defined by fear. Now let's, let's look at factor 2. So let's look at the largest positive and the largest, largest negative values. And it looks like olfactory is the largest positive and wind shift the largest negative, both with 0.74. So we can say that factor 2 can be olfactory versus the wind shift factor. Now, how exactly we've decided on just two factors and how we measured that will be discussed later on in another video. But for the purposes of this video, it's good to, to look at this and at least be able to tell by looking at the high and low values what each factor essentially is. Now, the eigenvalues at the bottom of the table here, 1.41 for factor 1 and 1.29 for factor 2, indicate how much of the variance in the five variables is accounted for by each factor. So since there are five variables in this analysis, and since the variance for each standardized variable is one, there are five variance units to be accounted for. Accordingly, the first factor with an eigenvalue of 1.41 accounts for 1.41 variance units out of five. So the most this could have all factors 1 and wind shift 1, detour 1, fear 1, operant 1, which totals 5. But the first factor accounts for 1.41 units out of 5, so that's about 28% of the variance. And the second factor, in a similar manner, accounts for 1.29 variance units out of 5, giving it, making it 26% of the variance. So it's pretty similar that um, I guess both factors are, are almost equal in the amount of variance they account for in the five cognitive tasks. So we can say in this example it's actually an example looking at how mice perform on these cognitive tasks looking to see whether there's a an overall theme for intelligence or if intelligence can be broken down into different factors and we can see here because these are both similar we can say factor there are at least two factors that can account for intelligence at least in mice now once again we'll talk later on in, in another video about how we calculated these factor loadings how we decided on two factors and more about the the eigenvalues but for the purposes of this video, it's good to just to, to know what table 4.3 in your text is, is talking about and how we can derive um, from these values what each factor is.